Hey everyone, happy Monday. We are going through Walking in the Wilderness with Beth Richardson. This is our third week together. We are going to be talking about Lectio Divina. So if you wanna pause real quick, I need you to get your Bible and I need you to get um, something to write with. Like if you're a doodler or you're a person that likes to um, write like as you're thinking of things, um, not necessarily um, something you have to do, but um, I encourage you to get a pen and a piece of paper. Lectio Divina is um, something that is like an ancient spiritual practice about how to read and meditate on scripture um, because a lot of times we just read scripture and we're like, okay, like what does this mean? So um, I'm going to read you a little bit about what Beth um, Richardson has um, prepared for us. Um, but first, um, we're just going to start with a few deep breaths. At least I need it. Holy Spirit, you are among us this morning or whenever time we are watching this. God, be with us in this time. Inspire us to receive what you have to give us this day. Amen. So, Lectio Divina is um, something, I'm not going to tell you again that I'm good at all these things, but the this is also why I'm doing this, because I want to learn how to get better at these things. Um, it is is just a way to start to meditate on different scriptures, like I said. I'll go ahead and read this from Beth. Lectio Divina, from the Latin Divine Reading, is an ancient practice of praying the scriptures. Lectio Divina invites the reader to interact with the text using the eyes and ears of the heart by asking the question, what is the Holy One saying to me in this passage? The practice traditionally consists of four steps, reading, lectio, reflecting on, meditatio, responding to, oratio, and res resting in, completatio. In Lectio Divina, the scripture is read for formation rather than information. The underlying question is, what is God trying to say to me in this moment? Origin in the 3rd century, believed that Christians could meet God in Scripture. In a letter to St. Gregory, Origen wrote, When you devote yourself to the divine reading, seek the meaning of divine words, which is hidden from most people. The four steps of Lectio Divina are most commonly used with Scripture. However, this process can be used any number of ways to help the reader listen more deeply to God. In this process of Lectio Divina, the scripture passage is read four times, each time moving more deeply into the text, listening to the ways God is present. Before you begin, pick out a passage of scripture to pray. So the first one, um, I'm going to actually do two different passages. Um, one, it actually says shorter is um, better than longer, so... I've got a really short one and then like a medium short one. So I'll read you the four steps. I think there's actually technically five steps in the Catholic Church that do this, but maybe this is the Protestant version. So the first step, reading. Read through the passage slowly. Listen for the word or phrase that jumps out at you, that catches your attention. What word or phrase calls to you or sticks in your memory? As you hear the word, gently take in your heart, take it into your heart, and silently recite or ponder the word. Two, reflecting. The second time you read through the text, meditate on the word or phrase that speaks to you. Let it interact with your thoughts, your hopes, your memories. Consider how the word or phrase is touching your life today. Three, responding. 
As you read the text a third time, consider how God is calling you forth into doing or being through the scripture. Allow God to use these words to touch you and shape you into your life today. 4. Resting. After the final reading, let the text rest in you. Spend about 10 minutes in silent contemplation. Let your mind and heart be open to the movement of the Spirit in you. It also, she goes on to talk about how you can do Lectio Divina with different types of scripture. Um, maybe still some holy readings, um, but that are not necessarily scripture. So um, what we'll do is I have two passages and we are going to read them twice through. I encourage you in the first time, you can just read along with me and maybe the second time you want to listen to my voice and then the third time if you want to start to meditate on what God is trying to say to you and then if you want to pause this video and and set you know 10 minutes or even five minutes to like rest in the scripture I think that that would be um, something you can do and then we can move on to the next one but it's up to you this is from Isaiah 40, no, sorry, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't fear because I am with you. Don't be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. And I will hold you with my righteous strong hand. Don't fear, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you with my righteous, strong hand. Don't fear, because I am with you. Don't be afraid. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you with my righteous, strong hand. And allow yourself to rest in this last time as I read it. Don't fear. Because I am with you. Don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you with my righteous, strong hand. The next scripture comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Whenever you're ready, we can read along together. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part, it won't be taken away from her. Allow yourself to be put into the story. What do you smell? What might you hear? Can you visualize being there with Jesus and the sisters? 
While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare a table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken from her. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken from her. And this last time, ask, your, ask yourself, what is God trying to say to me in this passage? While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken away from her. You can do this with any scripture, any kind of sacred text. Allow yourself to read it, to meditate on it to pray over it, and to ask yourself, what is God trying to say to you at this time? Let us pray. Holy God, your scriptures come alive for us as we sit and we meditate on them. Allow us to use your scripture for more than just facts and information, but in a way that will transform our lives. Allow us to seek you every day so that we can become more and more like Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.